and wait on you, dear God. You will come see your Father. Lord, let them know that they ain't going to leave tonight to see your Father. Lord, touch them in a mighty way, Father. Bring them closer together, Father. Lord, let them, let them go through this. Let them grow through this situation, Father. Let them come out stronger, wiser, and better this evening, Father. Let more love come out of this home going this evening, Father. Lord, we're not looking at what we missed. We're talking about what we can get in the future from this. One. So bless them in a mighty way. Bless them. Lord, we just ask you to bless them. Lord, somebody's hurting this evening, Father. Somebody don't know what to do this evening, Father. Lord, they are prayed, they are fasting, but they still, mind is still in torment. But I'd just like to remind you, that, Father, trust in the Lord of all that heart. Yes, Lean not on your own understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. Yes, God is still in control of this situation. Oh, yes. And don't you let Satan come in and change it. So this is what he just <coughs> celebrated when we feel in bad. Yes. But when we down, when we weak, we know our Father is up and he is strong. Yes. So bless him in the mighty name. This prayer we pray in your son in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Sprouts. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have a poem from the oldest poem, the Linda Sparta. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a great hand.
And at this time, you know, he, he needs no introduction to this family. He has been a part of this family for years. Amen. 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 I'm so excited to see him on this day. And I was glad when uh, they said that Reverend Jordan would be doing the eulogy. Because I love to hear Reverend Jordan when he has a word to say. Amen. Amen. And so with no further ado, let us put our hands together for Reverend Dave Jordan. As he Amen. I was told that uh, when I heard of Mother Everett's home going, that we would have a home going service. Right. And in home going services, we celebrate because we know that the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. I just need to stop for a minute, and I know I'm on a time restraint, that's fine, but I just need for about maybe, maybe one, a minute and a half for us to just give God the praise for all that he's done for us. St. Joseph in an era where anyone there can say anything to anybody's child. All right. You know, we don't do that now. You know, you got to come to me to say something to our kids. Now, I don't understand it, but back at St. Joseph, back in that time, anybody that seen your child out of line was able to correct your child. And, and I got to tell you, I've been corrected by Mother Everett a whole lot. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, I've been also encouraged by Mother Everett a whole lot. And it gives me great pleasure, you know, one of, one of the things is, and I do many funerals a year, uh, but there, there always seem to be one funeral throughout that year that always uh, uh, seemed to uh, uh, prick me in my heart, you know, there's always one to seem to get to me, and I, I, I begin to ask God, God, if you have me to do this, I need you to stand with me. Amen. And as I was doing this, I, I, I heard Mother Everett's raspy voice say, Oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> I remember one day, and I'm going I'm to go ahead and do what I need to do, but I remember one day I was coming in. I don't know if uh, Hilda remember this or not, but I was, I was younger, and uh, we were coming in. I was at the back of the church, and Mother Everett came in. And I looked at Mother Everett, and I went to hug her, as I always do. And she looked at me and said, uh-uh, you got the devil all over you. <laughs> that was the kind of person that Mother Everett was. She was going to tell you what was on her mind. And, and I thank God and I praise God for that. But then you do know that God only lends us great people only for a short amount of time. Is that right? And, and, and the Lord felt uh, seemed fit that he would call Mother Everett home because this is not a home down here. Uh, she was just visiting. I know sometimes we get attached, we get relationships, and that's the hardest part about this thing. You know, separation is very hard for us all. But God said, listen, I'm just lending her to y'all just for a little while. If I had to preach tonight, and I'm not going to, but if I had to preach tonight, I would probably open my Bible up to 2 Timothy the fourth chapter and the sixth through the eighth verse. And if uh, anyone, I, I come not to tell you not to grieve tonight. I come not to tell you not to cry because when you hurt, you cry. God never did tell us not to cry, but he did promise us that he will wipe the tears from our eyes. And I'm so proud tonight to know that even in the midst of what we're going through, even in the midst of all of our hurt, 
and pain that God is still able to see us through. I wish I had somebody to talk back. I, 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 I realized that as I was preparing myself, I began to think of all of the things that Mother Everett has done around her church. Yeah, I said her church because, you know, when you have a personal relationship with God, you begin to have personal relationship with your church. Mother Everett loved her church. As a matter of fact, there was no surprise to me that one of her last requests was that y'all take care of the church. Now, 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 somebody like that definitely, definitely, definitely needs no question to my mind if she's going to make it into heaven now. Do I have a witness in here? I need to talk back just for a little while. The Bible tells me, my brothers and my sisters, that in fact, Mother Everett is not dead, but she's just asleep right now. For I wish I can, I can convince everyone in this place tonight that we live to die, but yet we die to live. And I sit back and I was able to observe some great things that Mother Everett and Hilda did right in St. Joseph. I, I, my mind goes back to when they started taking over the choir's anniversary. And the choir would be up in the choir singing that morning, and when we go downstairs after morning service, the whole downstairs would be transformed into a banquet room. We had everything that you can even imagine. I'm talking about from baked chicken to fried chicken to everything you can even think of to make you happy. Don't have anybody from St. Joseph in here. And then, and then they made us feel a whole lot more special. Because we would sit down and once we sit down, we'll look around and we will have some keepsakes on the table. They would leave us some gifts to say, quiet, we simply appreciate you. But I came today because I have that stored in my mind and in my heart. And I want you to know this tonight, Hilda, that none of that was in vain on tonight. All of those times y'all went down and you was down in your apron, mother was down in her apron doing what she do. None of that was in vain tonight. And that's why we celebrate tonight the simple fact that God allowed us to have Mother Everett in our lives. Glad tonight. Because as I sat down and I talked to the Lord and said, Lord, I need your help to get through this thing tonight. So Lord, what is it that I would give to the people of God on tonight? And he simply said, I need you to let everybody in the house know tonight that she made it to the finish line. Well, I, I began to think about this thing a little bit further. And I said, well, there are some people that are still in the race. And there are some people tonight that's probably from this is ready to give up. But he said, I need you to tell them to just keep on running the race. Yeah, Hilda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to keep running the race tonight. Because the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, yes, right. but to the one that endured to the end. Mm -hmm. Well, God, what is it that you would have me to talk tonight about this race? Say, so number one, I need you to let the people of God know in this place tonight that there is a reward at the finish line. Amen. I started getting excited myself right there. Because I realized that on this race that I'm running tonight, that every once in a while I get discouraged and sometimes I get ready to give up. But he said, if you hold on just a little while longer, there is a reward at the end of the race. I wondered about this thing a little bit. I wanted to know, would it be a medal tonight? No, it's not a medal. I wondered, would it be a bag of money or a check waiting for me at the finish line? No, it's not that. But one of the things that he did promise is that we will have a new home. All right. For I can imagine tonight that the mother ever moved from her old address over to her new address in glory. Right. I knew y'all wouldn't believe me tonight, so I went to the word of God to just get some evidence tonight. Come on, come on. And when I looked at John 14 chapter, it tells me, let not your heart be troubled. Yes. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, that in my Father's house are many mansions. Yes. 
He said, if it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. And the way ye know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not the way. Well, how shall we get to where we're going? Jesus looked over at him and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, when I began to think about that, I said, well, Mother Everett went through Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mother Everett went through Jesus because I can hear her calling in her soft, raspy voice some Sundays, Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. I can sit back and I thought about this race and it tickled me a little bit because as I was sitting back and I was consulting the Holy Ghost to give me something tonight, I can hear that was always one Dr. Watts that Mother Everett would always sing. And she would always sing, I know I am a child of God, although I move so slow. I began to think about that thing and I said, Lord, I understand now why she would tell you that she's still a child of God even though she don't get there as fast as somebody else. She said, well, in my later years, I slowed down a little bit. I couldn't move around the way that I wanted to move around. But she still declared that I'm still in the race. And I want to know tonight, is there anybody in the house tonight that is still in the race? Is there anybody here tonight that have made up in their mind that they're going to still run the race regardless of any stumbles that may come in their life? Looked at this thing for what it really was. I looked at the race. Said every once in a while, while you're racing, the wind will blow hard. When the wind start blowing hard in your life, you start to slow down a little bit. Come on, come on. Then I start to think that there are storms that are raging while you're on the race field. But when those storms seem to come in your life, I can hear that every once in a while, I can hear Mother Everett in the back of my mind say, sometimes I had to sit down just a little bit and take a rest, but I didn't give up. I got back in the race and Mm -hmm. I kept the faith. In our text today, we find out here that Brother Paul was here in a Roman prison awaiting execution. In other words, they were getting ready to kill Paul. They was getting ready to get rid of Paul simply for preaching the word of God. But Paul said to himself that it don't matter what they try to do to me. I've done the very best I can. I'm not sad today because I know that sooner or later I'm going to have to go that route. And I don't know if everybody in this place realizes it or not, but one day or another, our name is going to get called. I don't know if you understand or not, but there'll be some that won't make it to the finish line. But I came to tell you in here today, don't throw in the towel. Stay in the race just a little while longer. She didn't make it to the finish line by accident. She didn't get carried to the finish line. There was a lot of things I seen Heal to do for her mom. But when it came down to the Lord, I can hear Mother Everett say, I got to do what I got to do. And I wish I had just three witnesses in the house on tonight that knew that when troubles and trials come in your life, that there is a man that sits high but still looks low. He will come and see about us. I'll just be here about three more minutes if you pray with me here. Paul knew that his death was close. He wasn't looking to be set free. He wasn't looking to be exonerated. But he was simply saying, I've done the very best that I can do. And my brothers and my sisters here tonight, Without a shadow of a doubt, I know within my heart, Mother Everett has done the very best that she can do. I can look at her sometimes and 
when I was small, I would even go and talk to her, and she would simply tell me, sometimes I want to give up, but I'm hanging on in the race. And because she was able to hang in the race, I felt it was a need for me to hang in the race. Do I have a witness here? Here Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Number one, I fought a good fight. This speaks to the struggles that we've gone on in our lives. Which means that I can hear mama saying every once in a while I got knocked down by something or nothing or another. But in the course of me getting knocked down, I got right back up with my dukes up. And I began to continue to fight in faith. I can hear mama saying, no matter how they tried to scandalize my name, I still made sure that I stayed in the race. Hallelujah. And I wish I had some yes. people in here today because yes. a lot of our young folk nowadays don't have that uh, endurability that they yes. used to have yes. no more. Yes. That's why suicide is on yes. the uprise. Mm -hmm. Because instead of staying in the race and hanging in there a little while longer, a lot of folk decide that they will give up. But I'm glad that there were people like Mother Everett in my life. Yes, that even in good or bad times, she would still stand up and say, I won't complain. Hallelujah. I can hear her saying, I've had some good days in my life. And I've had some bad days in my life, but through it all, I still, I won't complain. I can hear her saying, sometimes I got knocked down in the mud. Sometimes folk counted me out and thought, that I wouldn't make it or amount to anything. But I can hear her saying that I still kept the faith anyhow. I still remember that he may not come when I want him to come. But thanks be to God, he's always on time. Good evening, y'all. I got to leave here, but I need to tell you here today that if you really want to encourage the family today, then you need to keep on standing. I came to tell you, family, if you want to continue to live in Mother Everett's way, you need to keep on running. I came to tell you this night, tonight, that, family, if you want to keep a memory alive tonight, you must keep on believing. Because when you believe that the Bible tells us that there is a crown that is stored up for our righteousness. And here, my brothers and sisters, I'm so glad, but one of these mornings, and it won't be long. But you want to look for me and I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be at the finish line meeting Mother Everett. Because today I say Mother Everett not goodbye but I will see you later. And I'm so glad tonight that I can just keep on running in spite of what I'm going through. I wish I had a witness in here tonight. I'm so glad tonight that we've been made and doing for a night. But I'm so glad God will come in the morning. Uh, if you just keep the faith and believe in God, uh, everything is going to be all right. I can hear Mama saying, uh, Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. Uh, no other help that I know. Uh, but if thou would draw thyself from me, uh, there's no other place that I can go. Uh, good evening, every family. May the Lord bless you real well. Uh, but I'm so glad that one of these days, uh, as I continue on running, uh, as I continue on fighting, uh, as I continue on keeping the faith, uh, I can believe in my heart everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, you can cry, but that's all right. Uh, because God will, uh, he'll wipe your weeping eyes. Uh, you I have a witness here. Uh, for I know the Bible tells me uh, that one of these days, uh, and it won't be long, uh, we're going to have to run. Bless his holy name. But at the finishing line, I'm going to see him for myself. One of these days, I'm going to be able to rest from my labor. You do know that mother was working for a very long time. But guess what, y'all? She get to lay back right now 
in the presence of Jesus. There was time when there was aches all in her body. But guess what? Where she's going, there'll be no more pain no more. Where she's going, there will be no more heartaches no more. Where she's going now, there'll be no more cancer no more. There'll be no more sugar diabetes no more. There'll be no more AIDS no more. Because she's gone up to glory. And guess what? One of these days, I'm going to see you for myself. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some lonely nights. But when I look around. And I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. So I, I won't complain. I can hear saying this. Sometimes I put out hang low. I can hardly see the road. But then I ask one question, Lord. Why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they don't see. It's all right, Hilda. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Anybody here thankful? Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. I can hear mama saying this. But God has been good to me. I can hear her saying that. He's been so good to me. More than this whole world could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good. He's been so good. I'm talking about me. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. He drove all of my tears away and turned my midnight into day. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. And I, I won't complain. I'm touching me, God, that was a of somebody's church yeah, right. this Sunday. Because you never know, never know Hallelujah. when your time will come. Right. And I know one thing, if Mother Everett had her way, everybody in this building would be saved. Amen. 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 So if you sit next to somebody, you know they ain't in church. You tell them on Sunday, I'm coming to get you. And then don't knock on their door. Because you know they'll try and treat you like so, you know, like you're the insurance man or somebody. And look like you're a bill collector. You know. But everybody needs to be in what? Church. Amen. Amen. You only go in peace like Mother Everett when you know the Lord. That's having a relationship with the Lord. Amen. You know, some individuals will go out kicking and screaming. 
But the thing about it is when you have a relationship with the Lord, you know how to just go to sleep. Amen. 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 Look to the person next to you. Do they look like they go to church? <laughs> Amen. Look on the other side. Amen. I think everybody just saw somebody they need to take the church up. Uh, amen. Uh, you can't always judge a, cover, a book by its cover. That's right. Amen. But let's just be sure. Amen. Amen. At this time. If there are any resolutions, we're going to ask that you come forth at this moment to read such resolutions. Amen. Amen. All right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, Apostolic Ministries, 12248 South Parnell, Room 1C, Chicago, Illinois, 60628, October 15, 2012. To Sister Patricia and the family of Ali Mae Everett, Resolution. Whereas, once again, God's divine will has manifested into your family, we must always remember that his will is perfect. He makes no mistakes. It is his will that in all of our understanding our getting, we get an understanding of his call for Ali May as she is now entered into his rest. We all loved Ali May, but God loved her best. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Apostolic Ministries wish to extend our warmest wishes of peace and comfort as we think of you in your time of sorrow. Our thoughts of you become prayers, <laughs> lifting you to the Father for strength. The word of God clearly states that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. So during this time, we encourage you to allow his strength to become your strength and his peace to become your comfort. We have may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Psalms 35. May the memory of Ali May live vibrantly in your hearts forever. May you rely on him who can and who will heal and all your sorrows and wipe away every tear. Be it resolved that in death we are absent from the body, but present with the Lord to reign with him forever. Be it further resolved that we extend to you our deepest and sincere sympathy on the passing of your loved one, Ali May. A copy of this resolution will be given to you as well as placed in the church records. Prayerfully submitted the 15th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2012. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, Apostolic Ministries, Elder Lucius Farmer, Jr., Pastor, Evangelist L. Miller, Church Administrator. God be with you. Amen. Amen. Right. We have a special thing from Zeb Everett. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Let's give an honor to God. As everyone knows, he knows my mother. She was a spiritual woman, a woman of faith. One of the things that I know about every person I call a friend, we all have strong mothers. Something that we don't have with a lot of mothers today. My mother put this family first. There was nothing that she could not do. Amen. If there was a problem, you took it out of me. She was going to straighten it out. And if you had a problem, she was going to straighten you out. <laughs> now, I'm 52 years old. I was born to this woman out the womb. So my vision of my mother is some kind of stained. Because as a child, all the man ruled with an iron fist. <laughs> that line was very clear. 
you got close to that line, you were dealt with. <laughs> so as I went forward with my life, my mother being a woman of faith and always been in the church, sometimes said, Zeb, you need to be in the church. Uh, he went to church. Linda went to church, but then she became a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Patricia went to church, and she moved to California. <laughs> Felicia went to church. Oh, stop now. He had to find <laughs> So, Ali Mae, to me, is a rock. She has already been illuminated is that she endured perseverance. It's something that we all have to have as we travel this thing we call life. Because there will be times when you don't know what the outcome is. So in your faith that you have, when you reach for your strength, that's where you will find it. Now, if you go to church, where well, you can find my mother when she's feeling well and when she's not feeling well, you have to ask yourself this question. If the church is the answer, then if the fruit does not fall far from the tree, at some point you will get your life together and you will do Amen. the right thing. Amen. Now, my mother was in church, but I remember when my mother was having a uh, good time. <laughs> they called us through on a Monday, <laughs> but Tuesday was just as bad. <laughs> know because see people come into your life sometimes for just a reason yeah, yeah, right. Right. and for those of you who had to come in your life for that one reason it may have done something to straighten you out right. there were people when my mother was in the projects we called it the projects yeah it didn't have any grass yeah. <laughs> but my mother would take a broom and a mop and mop the porch from his mama house <laughs> to their mother's house Amen. around the corner to the elevator. Amen. Because Amen. she wanted to see it clean. Amen. So what happens is that with my mother for that one purpose, some people took that on. And the next thing you know, everybody was cleaning. All right. <laughs> that was the reason. Then there's that season. You know, everyone knows that every man is born a woman is sure to die. So when my mother passed, it was no mystery to me. It was no mystery to my family. But when it was that time to go, it's time to go. When you gotta check out, you better check in first. So today's message, I tell you, Pastor, uh, yes, he was he was hit on. For those of us who have those problems when you look around and you ain't been in church in a while, I mean you might have some problems in the while. So some people come in your life for a lifetime. My mother was in my life, my entire life. So having said that, for me, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. You know, I like order. I don't like a lot of mess. I don't made them like a lot of mess either. <laughs> That's why we're going to end this and we're going to be gone soon. I'm going to tell you this shit before I go. I want to thank you all for those who sent their prayers, uh, those who gave me encouraging words, those of you who love out of May, if you love out of May, then it's not very hard for you to love, because there's love in your heart. Okay. Oftentimes it is said that you can know the, the value of a man by looking at his mother, looking at his wife, and looking at his children. Mm -hmm. So if I am anything, if I am to have anything in my life, if I am to have meaning and purpose for my own children, then I am, like my sister said, out of May's son. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Well spoken, wasn't it? Well spoken, well spoken. Uh, one of the things that I've seen is understanding. Uh, you got to know that uh, when Mother Everett did anything, she had a good friend that I know that she talked to. And I know they talked on a regular basis, and I don't want us to leave here without recognizing her good friend. Hey, Amen. And Amen. the good friend that I know that she had. She had other friends, but the one I know she had 
was the person she sat on the second row with. <laughs> and that was Mother Katie Hill. Amen. Amen. Will you stand up, Mother Hill? Amen. Amen. She don't get it, man. She fights me. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. And to each and every one of you, I want to personally thank you for being here on this evening. And to the members of St. Joseph, if I were to ask the members of St. Joseph to stand up, probably half the building would. Uh, but the thing is, is that as we move forward, I'm going to ask those who are able to stand with me. And uh, as I read uh, the Lord's Prayer as requested for the family, if you're able, please stand. And after I get done, we're going to ask Sister Clemens if she will prepare to sing, and Reverend Jordan will come and complete the processional. Amen? Amen. And it says this. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sister Clement. Amen. And I'm going to ask that if everyone will remain seated as the family begins to make their way out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Reverend Jordan. Amen. Shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. Don't you worry about me. See, I'm just another soldier. Hey, hey. Oh, 